And good morning and welcome to Touch Base Daily. My name is Ron Foster. I touch base with you as I do every day, except for Saturdays and somewhat Sundays. Uh, no Sundays, and, but somewhat Saturdays. How are you doing? How's everyone doing today on this Tip Tuesday? It is Tip Tuesday, guys. It is Tip Tuesday. Good morning. G is in the building. Miss G is in the building. It is our Tip Tuesday. And today we are going to be talking LinkedIn headshot tips. Ooh, are we ready? Are we ready for that? LinkedIn headshot tips. And excuse me, but it is one of my pet peeves. <laughs> LinkedIn photos are my pet peeve that so many people do not think about their LinkedIn's. And I wonder how many people are in this audience that are on LinkedIn. How many of you use LinkedIn uh, for your businesses, for your side hustle, for your corporation, for your companies that you work for? LinkedIn is for many things. Most of you you th used to think LinkedIn was just to get hired, right? You would look for a job and go, go to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is more than just looking for a good job. There's connection, networking, building, motivation, encouragement. LinkedIn is so many things. But many of us need to, when we get on LinkedIn, we need to look a certain way, like not busted. So anyway, who's in the building? I see here, uh, <laughs> I second that, Ron. Please get a decent and high quality headshot for LinkedIn for all things. Holy moly. Holy. <laughs> um, uh, you guys are digging the fashion choices. Chat, Gary's in the building. What's up, Gary? Gary is in the building. And uh, so checking all the folks out who's popping in. Let's see who's in the Instagram world. Jamel Shabazz is in the the. the Instagram corner. Come on over to our YouTube uh, channel, Touch Base Daily. If you happen to be on YouTube, I'm sorry, Instagram, come on over to YouTube and uh, for a better visual experience and sound and interaction experience. Okay, so um, this, I'm going to wait a little bit. Um, so, how are you guys doing on this Tip Tuesday? There's a lot going on in the world. Uh, yeah, it's so messed up with, the, with this Congress and not getting aid over to Ukraine. Uh, Russia just took another some a fresh territory. I should say not fresh territory, but reclaimed some territory. Um, so that's looking bad because we are not helping like we're supposed to. They are running out of ammunition in the Ukraine area. I know we uh, we do pro we promote peace in this community. But how we also know that there is a war going on in Ukraine, as well as uh, the unfortunate war in um, I don't know I don't want to call it a war uh, in Israel. It's not a war. Uh, you can call it, it's more of a slaughter in some ways. Uh, I I don't want to dive into that one, but it just when you think of twenty thousand plus people are dead, mostly women and children. That is not a war. That is a, as we like to, you know, as we would want to say, is that is a. I don't, I don't want to call it a holocaust, but it is, it is very close to that. So I'm very, um, we, we, they really need to stop. Uh, the Palestinians is how much can you bomb? How much can you destroy? Uh, the people of Palestine have no home. First of all, now you got a place that was a strip of land. I very rarely talk about it here on, on, on Touch Base Daily, but sometimes you just have to say, say what's you know what's the realities of it all. And um, you think of the Palestinians on a strip of land, um, probably no bigger than Manhattan, and um, millions of people. And now they've been all congested down to the southern part of the of, of the of the allocated land and um and it's just horrible just horrible uh it's a humane crisis uh so many people around the world are saying israel it needs to stop you made you made your point you made your point it needs to stop and um so not happy about what's going on in palestine 
um, is not looking good. But they did have a hearing in the UN yesterday. Uh, several countries and even America was on the side this time of saying it must stop. So um, there seems to be a breakthrough, I guess, in some ways uh, for America. I, I know America has to kind of like straddle the fence on it is their main ally ally in the Middle East. But uh, you can't support the slaughter of innocent people. And um, yeah, even though, you know, you say, oh, but, you know, they were attacked. Yep, they were attacked. But you think about it. You think about it. Uh, and not to compare how the death tolls, but if you lose 100 people and you take out, I think the number is like 25,000 people. That's, that's ridiculous. That's a slaughter. That's a slaughter. If that was any other time in any time of history in any place in the world, it will be called exactly that, a slaughter, a massacre. And thank you, Jamel, it's 29,000 and counting so far. It's a slaughter. I mean, I, I think back um, for those that, you know, I, I spent time in Namibia, Africa, and people don't realize in uh, the Germans uh, colonized Namibia and their general, I forget his name, but the general came in and said, look, we want your land. We're taking your land. And you have a certain amount of days to, to excavate, to, I mean, not, to get off the land, to get off the land. And in Namibia's history is one of the most, it's one of the most deadly massacres in their history. When the Germans came in and massacred thousands and thousands and thousands of Africans to take their land in Namibia. Um, and and I, I, when, I, I, when I see this, what's going on in um, Palestine, in Palest you know, the Palestinian territory, I, 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 I always, every time I hear about it, I think about um, our African brothers and sisters in Namibia who suffered great loss at the hands of the Germans. And um, and you cannot say it's fair. It's not fair play. And you can, you know, you can take out Hamas in another way. I mean, you could have you could have done a, a, what they call covert operations. You could have surgically removed Hamas, surgically. But with, you're killing innocent people, children and women, helpless people and men with no arms and they're dead. I mean, 20, can you, can you wrap your head around it? I, I didn't mean to go into this subject so deeply today, but could you wrap your head around the number of 29,000 people dead? 29,000, shoot. We, 100 people dying in one, in one onslaught is horrible. 29,000. Jamel says 70% of the deaths are women and children. 70%. 70% is unacceptable. Just unacceptable. And um, I realized that, you know, like I said, I very rarely talk about it on this platform, you know, but this is something I just felt like I, I was looking at the United Nations yesterday and looking at how they um, the votes that were going through and some of the speaking that was head, that was happening. And it's just ridiculous. I mean, the number is just ridiculous. It's just horrible. Hey, cousin, I am Miss Reese. Um, but yeah, it's it's horrible. So. I know we, we always say prayers and thoughts. I, 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 I almost, I know there's going to be some people offended when I say this. I hate when people say my prayers and thoughts are with you. I just hate it. I don't, it's such a cliche in the modern world that we live in that people will say, oh, we're praying our thoughts and prayers. No, you need more than thoughts and prayers. You need action. You need action. You know, the old saying for those biblical Bible scholars in the audience, faith without works is dead. 
faith without works, faith without deeds is dead. So you can talk about all the faith you want, our, you know, all these wonderful rolling, rolling Bible thumping folks in the South, in the North, in our country, and yet we'll do nothing to support or help. So yeah, faith without works is dead. And um, people need to know that and need to practice that. But your prayers and thoughts, uh, it's like one person said after one of the killings, because we have, you know, in America, we have mass, we have uh, mass killings every week. So, and one parent said, I don't want your prayers and I don't want your thoughts. Yeah. So guys, keep your eyes on the Gaza Strip story. I know this, you may feel like you're helpless in this matter. But as long as we continue to talk about it, and as long as we begin to, uh, again, let our senators know and the people in power know that we are not for this, the killing of innocent people, we can make a difference. Every voice matters. So please um, share with your the people that you can, you know, all you gotta do is send an email. You know, just like you send an email to your friend or to your businesses, all you gotta do is send an email to your uh, senators uh congressmen so that way they can hear your voice okay i didn't that was that I, that was my morning political um speech or soapbox moment i just had to make sure i said that and that's oh yes and let's not forget jamel said and let's not forget let's not forget the genocide in sudan yes and the world is the world is heating up y'all the world is heating up um there's also a crisis going on in um i think it's guyana in venezuela um so check into that as well um uh, yeah the world is heating up people they're dictators all over the world and there are people that have bad motives and there are people that want to rule absolutely so yeah, keep your eyes on the news so that way you know what's going on. You know, I'm a big advocate. Uh, now, I know I'm a political junkie. I live in politics all day long. Um, but I can, I want to encourage you to also look at the news, learn what's going on, try to understand the policies of what's happening, understand what's going on both sides, and then weigh in and on the arguments. Hey, Janet's in the building. Good morning, Janet. How are you? I see Janet is in the morning. She says, good day, folks. Um, Brian is, hey, Mr. Brian Young Creative is in the building. He says, one voice may not be heard, but many voices, all our voices together, I know, can sing like a choir and be heard loudly. Powerful analogy. Powerful analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Felicia is in the building. You know. Fifi, I'm not used to calling you Felicia. <laughs> when, I, when I see your name, I just know what I'm going to Fifi. <laughs> but Fifi is in the building. Rashawn is in the building. How you guys doing? Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Um, Dr. Tachi says, uh, we need more than inactive thoughts and prayers. Absolutely, my dearest. Dr. Tachi's in the building. And... Um, yeah, Debbie Quinn is in the building. Good morning. And guys, just so you just as a reminder, since we're on politics and what's happening around the world, but what is happening here in the United States, I need everyone because on Friday we're going to talk about the project 2025. So make sure if you can go to Google, go to some of the resources um, out there and kind of like really take a look and just glance over or to dive into it deeply. Like I'll be diving in deeply. Um, I've already dived in somewhat more of it, um, but the pro project 2025, and that is a plan of what they want to do with America. Uh, so check that out. It is in plain sight. So as you can't say that you, if it happens, you can't say, I didn't know. Um, it's in plain sight. It's on websites. It's the people are talking about it, but they're talking about it on the low. And uh, the federal, I do believe uh, the federal Federalist Society uh, is the uh, one of the sponsors of 2024, 25 Project 2025. So check in that. I think Elise will be with us. Um, it will be myself, Elise, and uh, Chris uh, on Friday on our Focus Friday. We'll be focusing on Project 2025. Um, Lisa says 
Tips for Tuesday, do the work. Don't just pray about it. By all means, pray, but do the work alongside it. Amen. That's right. Faith without deeds is dead. Faith without works is dead. Okay. The skin is skinning, skinning Ron. <laughs> I just got out the shower. <laughs> Before coming in, coming on here, I said, let me get in. I had to get out of it. I, I had, you know, so how many of you in here are, are, are shower lovers? I mean, what I mean by that, a shower is more than just an experience of just washing up. A shower is like a moment of zen. I love the shower. I can, I can literally stay in the shower for about an hour. Um, even when I was a kid, my mother would say, get out that tub. Even, I mean, before the, well, get out the bathroom because she says you're going to be, you're going to grow scales because she thought I was going to become a fish. Uh, how many of you guys are, um, love to be in the water. Just love being in the shower. It's so, so zen for me in the mornings. And I just love the patter of the water. Just, I just, I just spray away under that. I have like all these settings on my um, shower head and it just makes me happy. I, I, is there anyone, am I the only one that feels that way when they go into a shower? <laughs> it's a whole experience. Uh, <laughs> she says, I'm a hot bubble bath chick because I'm drinking the bubbles while in the bubbles. <laughs> Quindlin, you do drink the bubbles. <laughs> Uh, Amparo says, my mom used to stand outside the bath until I got out. <laughs> I mean, am I the only one in here that the shower is just, it's just, it's just almost like romance. <laughs> it's truly zen. It's a zen experience. You really do forget about the cares of the day. Um, you pull in some good music. And you just shower away. Uh, Amparo says, I love a shower. Thank you, Amparo. I know we're, we're like, yeah, you and I are like, yeah. Um, I, we, used to, we used to have this, um, this spa here in New York City in Queens near Flushing. Um, and it was, uh, I think it was a Korean spa. And we used to go there years ago. And you it had like 12... 12, 12 situations. Like they had like the hot spa, the cold spa, the water spa, the pool spa. It was like 12 like places you could just, it was like a, it was a, it was a shower water like experience all day long. I mean, you just go in, you you check your clothes in at the at the lockers and you just walk around. I don't even know the name of that spa. But it was, I mean, they had, it was three levels. You, you can go on the roof. You can see the city skyline. Yeah, I love a good spa. When I'm in Iceland, I go to the spa. <laughs> I love water. I guess that's why I'm a Pisces. They say I'm a Pisces. I love the water. Even though I'm a fish going in two directions, that means I'm slightly confused sometimes. <laughs> yes. Oh, Amparo, you know it. I think it's called yeah, Spa Castle. I think there's also one in Jersey. Oh, what a place. What a place. A, a place of magically magical zen. Um, Lisa says, a waterfall shower head with very hot water is amazing. You know, um, my client, uh, Kohler, uh, when I go to the showroom, it's pretty much how I became their um, their photographer because I was in their showroom checking out what they have there, and they have all of these shower heads and all these shower like fixtures to create these amazing experiences. And I keep saying, one day, hopefully in this life, I will have one like all those shower heads, the shower heads that make your shower experience. It's an experience for, for we who love showers. 
Um, Serena's in the building. Good morning, Serena. How are you? So at least I know there's some shower heads in here, <laughs> literally. Not, <laughs> not the shower heads that you, but you know what I mean, shower heads. <laughs> it's officially Pisces season. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Friday is the big six zero. I'm so excited. I can't believe I'm going to be 60 years old on Friday. I, I was telling Janet, um, we are going to get to our lesson. We are. I, I We are going to get to it. But I was sharing with uh, Janet this week um, when I was tw when I was in elementary school, our teacher gave us an assignment to kind of look at our birthdays, and we were looking at the Chinese um, calendar. Uh, and we were just observing it, and I was like, "Oh, I'm the I'm born in the year of the dragon." So I was so excited because I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm a dragon!" And I ran home to my mom and said, "Mom, I'm a dragon! I'm a dragon!" <laughs> I was like, "I I was, yeah, I was in elementary school. I can't remember what age I was. Like maybe I was 10, 11, somewhere around there." Um, and I said, "I'm a dragon! I'm a dragon!" And so what we did was we did projections in the class, elementary school. We did projections of when our year of the dragon would appear again. And so I remember that my reappearance of the dragon would be when I'm turned 60. And so I always had this thing in my head about the year of the dragon and when I turned 60. And so for me, it's been a thing since I was like, like I said, elementary school. And so this year is the year of the dragon and I am 60 years old and I feel good because I made it. I, I mean, when I was 10 years old, 11 years old, it felt like so far away. It was so far away, but here I am, Friday, 60, six, zero, woo. So anyway, I know there's a lot of people in the room that's over 60. And I know there's uh, a lot of people that listen to this platform that are over 60. And uh, you're probably like, oh, you're still a babe, Ron. But, um, but it, is a, it, is, it is a miracle. And so what usually happens for me during my birthday time is I do a lot of reflections. So this week and that, you know, this weekend just passed. And this whole week and probably the next week after, I do a lot of reflection. I am a... I'm in my head most of this week, like thinking about the past, thinking about where I'm going, thinking about what I've accomplished, thinking about, I do that. I do assessments like that usually every birthday, but this is a special assessment birthday. So I'm looking forward to that on Friday. Uh, I have a big networking event on Friday at the Manhattan Chamber. We're meeting in, um, I forgot what the name of this hall that we're going to. But we're meeting, and I was like, oh, it's on my birthday. So we're having a, a Manhattan Chamber event on my birthday. I was like, the powers that be need to know it is my birthday. Usually I don't talk about it. Usually I'm usually low-key. Janet will tell you when I, back in the day when I met her, first met her, I met her on my birthday. And uh, for the first time when she joined my meetup group uh, for our street photography. And, um, but yeah, here we are. 60 is around the corner. Uh, yeah, Dr. Tachi says, happy birthday, Ron. Thank you, Dr. Tachi. Yeah, it is, it is, it's here, it's here. Uh, and Paul says, many people are unfortunate enough to get to 60. Amen. You know how many folks are over the years that I have grown up with that are not with me today as I turn 60. It is sad, but I rejoice. I rejoice every day. Like, uh, there's a woman that, that usually hangs out in the coffee shop. She's an older woman. And I said to her yesterday, I said, how are you doing? She goes, I'm doing mighty fine, young man. <laughs> she said, every day I get to breathe and I'm above the grave, I'm doing fine. And I said, well, yes, you are. And uh, she's, a, she's a quite spicy older woman that hangs out at the coffee shop. She's there every day. And um, so I love her. I love her spirit. Um, Bryson's in the building. You haven't, <laughs> you haven't came on yesterday. Yeah, we came on yesterday. Bryson, we were here. We're here every day, Bryson. We don't, we don't stop. I'm here every day except for Sundays. And now I'm trying to figure out my Saturdays. Uh, 
<laughs> Felicia says, can we agree to show Ron's pockets a little, I don't know what she's saying, a little on Friday. I don't know what she's saying. I don't know what, is it? yeah. So um, what else is in here in this feed? Oh, I, oh, let me not neglect my Instagram folks. I, let me see who's in the Instagram. Okay, everyone's over here. Okay, so everyone's, they enter in on Instagram and then they come on over to our YouTube channel because that's where we live. That's where we thrive. We thrive. Okay, let's get to the lesson. Let's get to the lesson. Uh, I don't want to run out of time. And I want everyone to um, get these tips because I think they're so important. So let's get to, let's get it on. Let's get it on. Let's get it on. Whoa. Let's get it on. Anyway, sorry. I, that, I, I just had an out-of-body out of experience. <laughs> it is Tip Tuesday and we are talking number one. Wardrobe choice, your wardrobe choice. Opt for professional attire that aligns with your industry. That's a key word there. Solid colors work well and avoid busy patterns. So let me, let me, can I just start my pre my pretext of this? Because I did put this in my Patreon page. Obviously, you know, I gotta look out for my Patreon folks first. Um, so let me. Let me share. Let me give you the pretense of what I'm, what I, I laid out to um, for one of my LinkedIn audience, and also it probably it's a little small there, but I'll read it out to you. Tip Tuesday linked headshot tips. Many LinkedIn um, profiles lack a professional headshot, and I wonder why. Perhaps some people cannot afford to hire a professional photographer, or they do not realize how important it is to have a high quality image on this platform. Whatever the reason, I want to help you enhance your LinkedIn profile headshot. Of course, I must say, of course, I would love for you to book a professional headshot session with me or any of my colleagues. So you can look your best on this platform. But until then, here are some great tips to help you with your LinkedIn headshots. Now we may begin. How many of you are on LinkedIn? That's a question. Maybe this conversation may be in vain, but I think most of you are on LinkedIn. So yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm looking here. I see here, Ron starts singing and my Google, my Google says, I didn't understand that. <laughs> okay, how many are you guys on LinkedIn? And I, I'll remember, I'll say it again. Back in the old days, LinkedIn was just, people just went on LinkedIn just to find a job. It is not the find a job spot any longer. I mean, people do look for jobs there. It's a job for mentoring. It's a job for encouraging. It's a job for motivate. It's a, a website for motivation. It's a job for wisdom. It's a job. It's a, it's a sorry a job. It's a it's a website for so many things. And if you are a business owner, if you are a entrepreneur, a solopreneur, you work for a company. You work for a corporation. You work for a small company. You work for a large company. You should have a profile on LinkedIn. One of my buddies wants to find a job. He applied for the job. Crickets. And I said to him, do you have a LinkedIn account? He goes, yeah, I have one, but I never use it. I said, you may want to dress it up. Because when a recruiter or anyone in human resources is looking at your resume as you apply for LinkedIn, I should say for the job, they go to LinkedIn to see who you are. And then they go to Instagram and then they go to Facebook. But the most important platform for business owners, for business solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, is LinkedIn. When I'm in a networking event, we exchange information, 
Guess where I go first? LinkedIn. When you are out, at, when you go to the diner, for instance, I was at the Capitol Grill restaurant, really fabulous restaurant here in New York. And this gentleman saw me with my camera and he asked about my camera and we exchanged information. He turns out to be a CEO of a company and we exchanged information. And you know what I did immediately when he gave me his information? I went into LinkedIn. I'm sure he went to LinkedIn because the next statement from both of us was like, I'll catch you up on LinkedIn. We'll catch up together on LinkedIn. Now, this is not an advertisement for LinkedIn, even though I respect LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. And you will find me there pretty much every day. That's where my clients live. That's where I find my clients. Business owners that want their headshots done, that want photography for their events. That's where my clients come from. So I'm invested in LinkedIn. So now back to why this conversation is important. Not everyone can afford a professional photographer, right? Not everyone can afford a professional photographer. We, we, that's, we know that. So this is for those that until you can get one, until you can invest in a professional photographer, which I highly recommend you do because there's a certain look that you have when you photograph with a professional photographer. But until, if you're like uh, in the middle and you're like saving up your pennies and your coins, this is what you can do this week or this weekend to kind of hold you over until you get that professional shot. Omar says, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> What's going on, Omar? Uh, I'm going to put a star on that one for Serena. I want to come back to Serena in a moment after that. So the first thing, you want to use your smartphone to take a picture of yourself? You want to use a camera or you have someone that's a friend? These are the things you want to do in the meantime of getting your professional shot done. Number one, now we can start. I had to lay the groundwork, I had to lay the, the foundation of this conversation. Number one, wardrobe choice. Opt for professional attire that aligns with your industry. Now, that is a very key statement. If you are a lawyer, you do not dress like someone that's in tech. Tech folks like to have a polo shirt or a t shirt or, you know, mostly polo shirts. They wear polo shirts, mostly black, black or navy blue, but mainly black if you're in high tech. If you're a lawyer, you might want to wear a suit. If you're a writer, you might want to wear a black turtleneck. Yeah, there's certain looks for your profession. So look around, look at other professionals professional writers, professional photographers, professional lawyers. I know a lawyer should be professional, right? But professional. Look at your industry to see how what's trending. Solid colors work well and avoid busy patterns. And I say that, I, I, I think that's so important. Keep it so that they can see the beauty of your face. Don't get busy down here so they can't see this because your face is where trust begins. Can I say that again? Your face is where trust begins. Okay, number two, grooming. Ensure a neat, polished appearance, a well-groomed hairstyle, and a subtle makeup, if applicable, I meaning ladies, some guys. Just because women aren't the only folks that wear makeup. Hello, photo shoots. Men wear makeups. No, makeups. Makeup can enhance your look. A well-groomed hairstyle and a subtle makeup can enhance your look. It's important. Uh, I tell uh, most of my clients, do not come to the photo shoot with a fresh haircut. 
meaning you just got a haircut this morning or yesterday. It is recommended by many photographers that you take, get your haircut done like five days out, four days out. So then your hair could look lived in. So your hair could look lived in. Like you didn't just cut, you didn't just get it all say shaped up for the for the photo. We want you to look natural and real. So get your hair fixed up five or four days before you take this glorious photo of yourself or by your friend. Remember, this is just holding up until you get your professional shot. Next one, number three, natural lighting. Since most people in the room, that if, you, if, you if you're not a professional photographer, you don't have studio equipment, I don't think. So natural lighting, if possible, take your headshot in natural light, position yourself facing a window or achieve soft, flattering light. Usually, it's usually light that's reflecting off something white or a light gray. Find yourself a place that is beautiful reflection, not the sun. The sun should not be on your face. You should not have the sun on your face. It should be reflecting, reflecting the light from something bright. So you get this beautiful glow and soft on you. So take that phone picture or put it on a I put it on a tripod, put it on a stand, and take that photo. Position yourself facing a window to achieve soft, flattering light. Next one. Number four, background. Choose a clean, simple background that won't distract from your face. Neutral colors or an office setting can be effective. Find a white wall, find a gray wall, find a light gray wall, find a black wall, find a brick wall, find a solid wall and stand in front of it and take the picture. So you need to have a couple of things going on. Good light coming at you, filtered, and a nice solid background. Nothing distracting, like I got all this distraction behind me. None, none of this, you gotta have a clean, white, black, gray, soft gray background. Let it go with the monos. The monos, we interior designers, yes, I'm an interior designer when I'm not here as a photographer. We love, we love monos, white, black, and gray. Don't worry about the brown, brown, nah, no. Your backdrop should be a white, a gray, or a black. Preferably the lighter colors than the black. But it also depends on your industry. Next one. And, I'll, and then we're going to have a Q&A after this. So take your notes. Make your notes as we go along. Make your notes. Number five, posture. Oh, I've been working on this. So I've, been, I've been conscious of my posture like crazy. I've been working on this for the last three years of trying to keep my body straight and right and upright, chest up. Anyway, maintain good posture to convey confidence. Sit or stand up straight with your shoulders. Relax, but up. Yeah. You'll look good in your photo. Don't do this and take a picture. Mm -mm. Don't do this and take a picture. Get out. I always, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm photographing my clients, I said, I want you to act like you're pinching nickels in the back of your shoulder blades. And I want you to stand proud like you're the president of the United States of America. And my clients usually laugh at me and they do it. <laughs> my clients look at me and they laugh. They say, Ron, I never thought about being president. Well, today you are president. Show it off. Today, get that chest up. Tuck that stomach in. Take a deep breath. Take the shot. Right? That's how we do it. 
and you can do it too. It was better than, it is, again, we're doing this is what you got to do while you're waiting for that professional shot. You can do these things, right? And just I, as a, I'm, I'm learning to do little commercial breaks. Join us on our YouTube channel, guys. Just make sure you do that. We're on Touch Base Daily on YouTube, so join us there as well. If you're on Instagram, come on over to YouTube, Touch Base Daily. Click on that. Now back to our list. Okay, six, facial expression. Aim for a friendly and approachable expression. Practice in front of a mirror to find a natural and confident look. Huh? Yes, before you take out your smartphone and do your selfie for your LinkedIn until you get a professional photographer, go in the bathroom, look at your face. Models do it all the time. They're always looking for their right side, their left side. What looks best? How does the light look on me? How do, where's my good side? Where's my bad side? Should I open my eyes a little more? Should I, should I get a little sexy and close the eyes with a little squint? Yes, practice. Go into your mirror, go in, I should say in front of your mirror and practice. Look at yourself. I know, uh, isn't it amazing that a lot of us are afraid to look at ourselves? Ooh, that's another discussion for another time. But yes, give yourself permission to look at your face, look at your posture. Stand. You couldn't get a better cropping than your mirror, right? So do it. Use your mirror. Practice in front of a mirror to find a natural and confident look. Know it. What I love about working with models, like I just did the photo shoot two weeks ago, a uh, week ago, well, no, it was a week ago. That, yeah, a week ago, I think it was. M my actor slash model slash client, he knew his moves. I mean, he just knew, he just moved, just, he knew, he knew, he just, he just, he just did it. All I had to do was click the button, just set him up. Okay, I like these leading lines, I like this angle, but he knew his looks. You need to find out yours. Know your look. Okay, guys? Next one. Camera angle. Position the camera at eye level or slightly above for a flattering angle. Avoid extreme angles that may distort your features. Yeah, so put your smartphone, put your smartphone right in front of you or just slightly above, looking down. Take the shot. Take the shot. Beware of your angles. Don't take it from below because for some of us, we got a little extra stuff going on down here. Most people don't look flattering with the cameras coming from below unless you set it up the right way. It takes a little practice to make people look good from below. This is one of the only times that you don't get low to take the shot. This is a head shot. This is your headshot that you're working on, right? With your smartphone or whatever phone you have to take it with or your camera. Next one, camera settings, using a high resolution camera or the best quality available on your smartphone. Ensure sharp focus on your face. Yes, you know, your phone has many settings. Sometimes it's set at low, low, right? Low resolution, but put it on the best resolution you can get out of your smartphone. So that way you look as best you can. Next one, multiple shots. Take several shots, take several photos to choose from like we do, like we do as professionals. This gives you options and increases the likelihood of finding the perfect shot. So take multiple shots. When you meet with, when you finally get to a professional photographer, they're gonna take many shots. Shots from the left, shots from the right, shots on head on, right? 
take many shots. So that way you can look at it. Because this is LinkedIn. Take it serious. Take it serious. Don't just go to the party, take a shot, and then put it on LinkedIn. No. Oh, it disturbs me when I see it. Oh, I'm at a I'm, I'm hanging out in the court in the yard and I'm taking a picture for LinkedIn. Oh no. Take it serious. Prep and take this information down. Do it. Do it. Take the time. It's worth it. It's an investment. Insta I'm saying that's say Instagram. I'm not LinkedIn. LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an investment of your career. People are going to make judgments on do I do business with you on LinkedIn. Okay, so take many angles. Go. Multi shot. Take several choice. Sorry, take several photos to choose from. This gives you options and increase the likelihood of finding the perfect shot. Next one. 10. Editing. Make subtle edits to enhance the photo, such as adjusting brightness and contrast. Lighten it up a little bit so they can see your eyes, they can see your face. Avoid heavy filters or ex excessive retouching. Yes, if you don't have smooth skin and you don't look like the person you are, hey, that, that didn't come out right. Let's start again. If you make yourself different in a photo than you are, then when people see you, they automatically begin to say, hmm, I can't trust this individual. Why does this person look like this online? But when I see them in real life, they don't look the same. They don't look like their picture. There's nothing where it's almost like being catfished. <laughs> it's like you meet, you, you see someone online. I mean, you can use these tips also for your dating app for those that are single, right? You can use these tips also for your dating apps. We should have us, yeah, we'll do a segment on dating app photos. I'm going to pin that. I'm pinning that thought. But guys, there's nothing worse than you looking one way online and then someone sees you in person and you look like you are not that person. And don't, here's sidebar. Don't post a photo of you 10 years ago on your LinkedIn that you just so happened to have a nice one. You don't look like you did 10 years ago. Whether you think you do, but most of us will say not. Definitely, definitely invest in the now. I always recommend to most of my clients, you need, no, I, do, I recommend to all my clients, not most, all of them, you should be updating your headshot every two years because you change. Or if you had a drastic look change, like you had long hair and then you now got, sh you have short hair. Anyway, retouch properly, guys. Number, number 11. Review LinkedIn guidelines. Check LinkedIn's guidelines for prof um, profile photos to ensure your image meets their recommendations and specifications. Pretty much any simple headshot will do. And then last but not least, feedback. Get feedback from trusted colleagues or friends to ensure your headshot gives the right professional impression. Can I say that last part again? Headshots that give the right professional impressions. Guys, feedback is important. So don't be afraid to go to your best friend and say, do I look good on this? this should I put this photo on LinkedIn? Does it look good? Does it look like a professional shot? I can't afford one right now, but I need one to hold me over until I can. Right? Don't look busted until you can. Get a photo. Get a good photo. Everybody that's listening to this, this online YouTube, because the great thing about YouTube, this video is going to go to many people. Not just this community, community that's here right now. 
There are going to be hundreds of people that are going to see this video. So I'm talking to everybody. If you have a busted photo, but now you may not know what that means because maybe I assume that everyone knows what a busted photo looks like. It's, you know, it's a black thing. We say, oh man, she looks busted. <laughs> so, so all my white counterpart folks that don't understand what I'm talking about, she look busted. He look busted. That just means they look, that photo is not good. It's bad. They need to change that thing. So I'm just saying for my white counterparts that don't know what I'm talking about, or maybe you're from another persuasion, you don't know what I'm talking about when I say busted. But we need to get rid of the busted shots. Anyway, and last but not least, I see you guys got a lot of comments in there. Oh, oh yeah, you guys got a lot of comments in there. We're gonna have a good discussion. Um, remember, a professional headshot is an investment in your brand. So take the time to get it right. Take the time to get it right. It's worth your time. It's your investment. Okay, what says you? q and It's time for Q&A. What's going on? Let's see what you guys are saying in here. Woo, I said a lot, right? Between all that, right? I said a lot. I said a lot. Let's see what you guys are saying in here. Okay. Uh, Serena says, I'm on LinkedIn. It's how I found my health and wellness coach job last year and have connected with so many between being an author and a health and wellness coach. LinkedIn is the spot, folks. If you're not there, you're not. You need to get there. Again, if you are a business owner, a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, or you work for a company, you work for a corporation, you should all be on LinkedIn. Um, Q, uh, J, uh, Ms. G says, as a former recruiter and hiring manager, I used to link. I used to. I use LinkedIn to find potential talent. That's right. That's right. Uh, again, from G, LinkedIn is a valid and bustling search engine. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to find us on LinkedIn. <laughs> no, Omar, I'm not reading from your frequently asked questions. <laughs> Oh guys, another photographer in the room. So if you're in if you're in Texas, you need to look up Miss Miss G G Photographies, and you need to look at Omar photos by Omar. That's right. I vouch for those amazing photographers. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Doctor Chalky says, "Don't go with the chalk line still on your edge." <laughs> Please. <laughs> oh, this 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 community is a mess. <laughs> this community is a mess. Brian says, for us ball fellas, lightly baby powder your head reduces glare. Good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, yeah, you you always see also you know the makeup folks they they put a little bit of that powder on or a little. So it absorbs the light properly. It makes the light balance on the skin. Don't wear Vaseline on your skin when you get in the photo shoot. <laughs> Don't wear anything glossy on your skin when you're doing a photo shoot. Yeah, yeah, that would not be a good thing. What's going on, Eldred? Eldred's in the building. <clears throat> okay, let's see what else you guys are saying. I uh, love all I was driving. Okay, got here. And Paolo says, high angles are best. Make face look better. Also, keeps focus away from body parts, which will look bigger. Ooh, very good. That, see, that's another, that's another photographer right here in New York. Amparo is another photographer. Look her up if you need her. You start to say, oh, Ron, you're giving shout out to other photographers? Aren't you afraid about your business? No. I shoot one way. Amparo shoots another way. You may like her style better than you like my style. You go with the photo photographer that works for you. 
But we photographers, we should be looking out for one another. Like I know, if I can't do a job, I get to say, Amparo, I have a client. She needs this or he needs this. Can you check her out? Can I give them your number? Look out for your fellow photographers. Yes, I am an advocate for the photography community. Um, <laughs> Dr. Taji says, Doc, what's the name of LinkedIn to find you? Oh, wait, well, my name? Or you mean my name? My name is Ron Foster. Ronald. I think it comes up Ron Foster or Ronald Foster. Yeah. If you put in Ron Lewis photos, it'll come up. You put up Ron Lewis designs, it'll come up. If you're looking for me, if you're looking for me on LinkedIn. Yes, I am on LinkedIn and I'm there every day. I post on LinkedIn almost four times a week. And Paul says, I'm loving this. It's a good conversation, right? This is this is giving what they call it, this content as value. <laughs> Dr. Tanya says, no, nah, not Vaseline on the face. No, no. Uh -huh. <laughs> Eldra says, busted equals ugly. <laughs> busted equals ugly. Okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> Lisa says, true serum is being served. Drink up. <laughs> God, I love this audience. I love this group. Uh, <laughs> says, Catfish, I'm dead. I tell you. Okay, so uh, we're near the close. We're near the end. So, um, but I hope you guys learned something today. I hope that this was beneficial. I hope this is beneficial. Do you guys have any questions? I don't see any other questions. Any other questions out there? Am I missing any other questions? And I'm looking through. I don't see any other questions. Okay, my photographer took over your pics. Okay, hi, Angie. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, I think I got all you guys in. I got all you guys in as we give a question. What about us with glasses? Take pics with or without? Oh. Now, I, that's, a, that's a good question because I've had clients that left a person that was giving them a professional shot because they didn't know how to take pictures of a person with glasses. Now there's some tricks to the trade when it comes to taking pictures with your glasses on. As you can see, there's glare. So you can see glare on my glasses if I move my head certain areas. But someone that knows what they're doing, you slightly tilt your head, slightly tilt your head so that way you don't get the reflection. So you slightly look down, not looking down like this, but you slightly look down. Or if there's light coming from this direction, you slightly move. You know, you gotta try to just get the light off of you. So try to go away from the light. The light's coming down, just slightly go down. If the light's coming from this direction, slightly move us, move away, just slightly away. Where the light is moves from this direction versus this direction. Okay? Um, but that's a, that's, a, that's a choice question. Some people like photos with their glasses on because that's what they look like every day. They wear glasses all day long. So they want photos with glasses on. That's who they, that's who they are. The glasses is a part of their personality. Sometimes people wear glasses that are styled. They like that particular style because it represents them. So glasses are great. You just got to know how to shoot yourself wearing the glasses. And that might take another, that may be an opportunity to again, go into the mirror and kind of like see where the glares are, where the glares are, move away and, and be able to see it that way. And then take a couple of shots to work on getting that glare out of the glasses. There's nothing worse than taking your head shots and you got glare in your glasses. That was a good question, B. That was a good question. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay. Okay. I think that's it. 
Oh, that's a yeah, that was that Kelly A said, that's a good question. That's a good question. Eldridge, uh, Ron Foster, Amparo, did the talk to Lisa Seeley. There you go. Okay. Let me give you some last minute stuff here as we close out. One, one is I'm still going to, I'm still, still shouting out for a long journey forward, Black Men in Passage. That exhibition is still going on. We had the great weekend. Um, where all the photographers talked about their photos, but it is still going on till March 9th. So check that out on the Lower East Side. Here's the information right here. It is open until March 9th at the Wilmore, Wilmer Jennings Gallery at Ken Kaliba at 219 East 2nd Avenue off of Avenue B in New York City. Some call it L Lower East Side, some call it Alphabet City. Check it out. Do that. Also, this weekend is our meetup. If you are into photography and you like to hang out with photographers, this, this Saturday at 2 o'clock, we're meeting at the Brooklyn Museum to take in the beautiful works of the Dean Collection of Swiss Beats and Alicia Keys called Giants. We'll be doing that this Saturday from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Usually after we do our meetups at 4 o'clock, we usually go into the neighborhood and we grab a bite to eat. We get some beer, some pub, whatever it is, Kool-Aid. No, no Kool-Aid. <laughs> we get something to drink and eat after, um, after 4 o'clock. Um, I will be at the uh, museum early because that's how I roll. I like to... I don't like to just go to the museum for just two hours. So I will probably be there around 11 or noon. Um, and then probably I'll probably end up doing our, my live from the museum um, for those Saturday, um, for the Saturday Vibe people. Um, but I will definitely be at the museum on Saturday early um, because I like to roam around and take in the work without my meetup group. Um, when the meetup group comes around, then I want to be able to be aware and be connected with my guests. So that's why I go early to take it all in. Let me just get this off the screen. Sorry about that. I should have gotten that, taken that off a while ago. Um, but yeah, so come out the 20, that is the 24th. Uh, we'll be meeting at the Brooklyn Museum here in Brooklyn, just uh, outside of Park Slope. And um, tomorrow is Wisdom Wednesday. And we have a guest on that is your, all go I mean, Kam Kamal. X is going to be with us, an amazing photographer. I think you're going to love his work. Um, yeah, so check him out, Kamal X, and uh, he'll be here tomorrow. Such a beautiful brother and uh, an amazing coffee table book that he has, and we'll share that as well. And um, so check out that for tomorrow. We'll be here tomorrow again at 11.15. We meet here at 11.15 every day. And also, I'm. If you are, uh, thank you again for the. Oh, I got a little banner. I I created a banner for these special folks. Thank you. Oh, let me get my. Uh, let me let me get this banner. Let, let me get this right. Thank you, Patreon members. Your support helps us create amazing content. So a shout out to all my Patreon members out there. Um, they are the reason why I do what I do. You, they, they finance what I'm doing here. So uh, thank you for the Patreon community. And if you're interested in, in supporting me as a Patreon member, you are more than welcome to do that. You just join my Patreon community with patreon.com slash Ron Lewis photos. And you could do it that way. If you're interested in supporting the content that we, that we bring to you or I bring to you, I like to say we, I'm like Gwendolyn, me, myself, and I. So we, until I get a staff, is we. <laughs> But it is a we because it is the con it is the Patreon community that supports what I do financially. Also, they give me information. They kind of give me like tips and they and their thoughts. Ron, you think you, you should be talking about this? Oh, Ron, yeah. The Patreon community has full reign to just talk into my ear about everything. Um. So yeah. So check that out. Uh, I see here more comments here. 
uh, la, 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 Adrian, hey, my son is in the building. He says, I went to the opening. Some good art in there and some good photography. Thank you, Sonny boy. Um, my favorite pieces are from Kende Wild. Yes, his work is amazing. Um, Adrian, I saw a post where Alicia was being photographed so he could use it to paint the picture. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. I cannot wait to go see it. I will be there on Saturday. So those are all the announcements. I think we got the announcements done. I think we are all in a great place. Guys, I will see you tomorrow with, again with our guest Kamal and uh, Kamal X. And we're going to have a good time uh, talking and interviewing and having a conversation about his career as a photographer. And I think that is it. So, guys, I will see you tomorrow.